Today I'm going to show you guys how to make your own percussion samples and then put them into one of your songs. True Sound Studios is in your ears. Hey guys, what is up? I'm Wizna. As always, we are here at my studio, True Sound Studios. And one of the things that I like to do on my own beats, my own tracks, is I like to make my own percussion samples. So what I mean by percussion samples is, you know, something besides like the kick, snare, and hi-hat. You know, maybe there's some sort of egg shaker thing or something that sounds like you're playing drumsticks on a piece of metal, or just something cool. It's like another percussion instrument that's going on with the drum beat. Now, obviously you can use things that are pre-recorded and, you know, loops that you find, but I think there's something like gratifying and fun about adding your own percussion samples. If you already have a vocal mic set up, we're just gonna very simply use the microphone that you would normally use to record your voice. Okay, so let me show you how to make your own percussion samples. Okay guys, so super simple setup. I took my vocal microphone, which is the Samson CO1 mic. It's the $70 mic if you haven't seen any of my other videos. We got our good old uh, Mr. Coffee coffee maker. I took a couple of pens, which I'm gonna use pretty much as like drumsticks, and I'm gonna hit a couple different elements. There's this, just a metal tray at the bottom here. Um, up top of the coffee maker. And then the side is a little bassier. So pretty much what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do two things. I'm gonna do individual samples of this, that, and the side. And then separately, I'm gonna play the track through some headphones while I record this to my DAW, but I'm actually gonna play along with the track. So I'm gonna show you guys two different ways. One way, you know, essentially we're gonna take samples and import them into a drum machine. And the second way we will actually physically time correct or quantize our recording, essentially make a small, maybe two or four bar loop of a percussion beat that we made ourselves and be able to put it into our track. But you guys can use, I mean, anything. Be creative, you know, find pieces of metal to tap on, your countertops, like, you're gonna find things that just kinda sound cool. So, all I did was just walk around the studio and try to find something that when I hit it, it kinda sounded cool and maybe that's a sound that I would want in my track. Okay, so there's not much to do. Um, I'm gonna start hitting this stuff and play along the track and then we'll go on over to the DAW and I'll show you guys further really how to edit this and make it work in your track. So the first thing I'm gonna do though is I got the headphones on, I'm gonna play the track and then play along with this and my microphone is gonna record what I'm playing. The same process as if I was gonna go ahead and record vocals. And now separately to make actually individual drum samples, I'm just gonna go ahead and hit each of these elements like two times each. Okay, there we go. Okay guys, so here it is. This is what I just recorded. This is playing along to the track. And then if we come over here, these are just the individual samples. So let's just first listen to the individual samples. I'll turn off this record. So that is the metal plate. This is the top of the coffee maker. And then finally the side of the coffee maker. So there you go. Those are the individual samples, which at the very end of this video, um, I'll show you guys how to do that. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we need to listen to this track um, and kind of pick out which part that I played along to the track sounds the best that we can essentially take that small little that small little chunk of audio and just kind of copy and paste it for pretty much the rest of the measures. So we'll listen to it with the track and then I'll solo it and we'll kind of pick out a good part. Give me the I'm gonna solo this now, so let's take a listen to it by itself because we really need to pick out like a good a good little section of audio. Bad. Bad. 
That's okay. So this one isn't bad here, but you can see this gets a little gets a little loud. So that was a good one right there. So that's great. So, you know, obviously with sonar, you guys have non-destructive editing. So if you want, you can kind of leave the rest of this alone. We'll get rid of that. We're just going to use this little tiny chunk right now of audio. So I'm going to clean both of these edges up so that there's really nothing before and after it. And then just fade these out like this. And there you go. So this is the little small chunk. Extend this a little longer. And I like to use fades because it helps, really helps pull the sample in and out. And it makes it sound a little, like it fits in there a little better. So there we go. Okay, so let's play with the drums. So as you can tell, you know, it, it's not perfect. So in Sonar, what we can do is right here, this clips, we can actually come down to audio transients. So what's gonna do is, is see these white lines have now popped up. Now we can actually individually move, essentially time stretch each one of these hits. So we're gonna go up to the top here and we're gonna snap this to probably 16th note, should be pretty good. Uh, let me get rid of this too, so we get a little more room, and we'll zoom in on this guy. Okay, so here is the beginning of the measure, so what I can do, I'm gonna zoom in a little further, is we're gonna start moving these. Now, you can use the quantize function if you want to do this, but for this case, I think we'll just do it manually just so you guys can kind of see. So I actually just switched to the 30 second notes because um, some of these actually are 30 seconds. So as you can see, it's just snapping to the grid. And right there, that's a good one. And you can see we're gonna move this up a little bit. Uh, hmm. Okay, that might go there. Let's take a listen to that. Yeah, so that's right. So these are just a little behind. And we'll pull these up. And don't forget, if you're not sure where these go, just play it and see if it sounds good or not. And, you know, essentially this is almost like moving MIDI notes now. And we are just going to move these around to the spot that we like. Now, because it is audio, you know, you can't necessarily move this as much as MIDI because this is actually physical. This is an audio file. This is not MIDI. Uh, let's take a listen to this right now. So there you go, now it's perfectly time aligned. Now if we come here, we right click on it and we wanna do bounce to clips. And essentially what it's gonna do is just mix down all those that time stretching that it just did. And then over here, we're gonna go back to clips so that now we're just in normal mode and let's take a listen to it. Cool, so we're getting there. So now we need to come back up to the top here and we're gonna to go to the whole notes. And what we're gonna do is we need to find a good spot so we can copy and paste this. So as you can see, the beginning of the measure is right here. We're just gonna do a teeny tiny little fade in. So now what I can do is we can do edit, copy. Come down here, we'll do paste. And we're just gonna paste it on all of these parts here. So take a listen. Give me the beat more. So maybe not there because we got that trap snare drum thing rolling in. So we'll delete that. And we'll delete the original one. And the first thing I already know, we're gonna have to add some sort of compressor to help squash uh, some of those things that are going on. So let's just use a really basic um, compressor. This is the R compressor. You can use anything though. This is just a very basic compressor. We're just gonna turn up that attack all the way because we wanna cut down on some of those those really aggressive attacks that are going on. Maybe we'll try like, try like two and a half to one. Okay, so that's, that's definitely getting better there. Um, just to control that a little bit more. And then now let's grab an EQ. Uh, any EQ will work. We just need something with at least four different 
parameters on it. So there's some like high ringing going on. So let's first try to high shelf this and see what this sounds like. So it sounds a little dull now. Let's let's high pass this or low pass it. So it's not bad. I mean, that that might work. And now let's just roll off some of the low end. I know there's really nothing there, but just in case. Yeah, it looks like we really don't need that low end cut. So we'll take that off. OK, cool. So now let's add some sort of effect to this because it's a little dry. It's a little too dry. Now I have some reverb set up here. I only have actually looks like three of them. So we have the early reflection. Now, if you guys don't know about, you know, what reverbs to use for what, um, check out my five reverbs um, video. I will link this in the description of this video so you guys can check that out. So I'm going to throw in this early reflection. You'll hear what this does. Kind of makes it sound like it's in a room a little bit more. Maybe we'll add a little reverb to this. So cool. Let's let's see what this sounds like in the track. Give me the beat for I my soul. I wanna get lost in so I think I want this percussion to come in in the second half of this track when the hi-hat comes in. So if you listen to the drums and we'll solo the coffee maker track I'm calling it so there you guys go I mean uh, let's add one more at the end there So it's cool. I mean, you know, that is your own percussion off of a coffee maker. I mean, how cool of a story is that? You know, that, you know, maybe you could call the track <laughs> coffee maker or something. So let's listen to it in the like verse section of this where the music really breaks down. So maybe for this part, because, you know, there's really not much going on, maybe we will just clone this entire track, essentially just make a copy of that compressor, volume, EQ settings, all that. And I'm just going to hold down shift and actually just pull it down to another track. So this is going to be Coffee Maker 2. And this will be for the verse. And what I want to do in this verse here is just center pan all this. So there you guys go. I mean, that is how, you know, you sample something like a coffee maker and put it into your track. So the last thing I want to show you guys is just really quick um, how to take your own sample and actually put it into a drum machine. So since we're kind of using this sound already, that like metal sound, uh, let's not use that just because, you know, that's no fun. We already played around with that. Let's go to the next one. That was the top of the coffee maker. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get rid of all of this. What we need to do is we need to cut this really close. We need to really zoom in and find the very beginning, which is right here. As you can see, this is where the waveform starts building. So we're going to cut this right here, and we're going to fade this in so that, once again, so it, it's a little smoother of, a, of an audio sample. And then do a nice fade out at the end here. So now that we have just this and with the reverbs on, it sounds like this. So it sounds cool. It sounds like a good sample. Now you got to be careful. You don't make these samples too small, like physically small in time. If it's only like a tenth of a second long, um, the drum machine really doesn't like that. So, so try to stretch these out a little bit and you try to make them a little longer than you know, a tenth of a second or whatever. You guys will find out that some samples that are super, super short um, just won't load into your drum machine very nicely. So um, just make sure on your track you have no reverbs on there. What you can do is highlight it, go to File, Export, 
audio and then call it something right here. I already call the file coffee one, which is what it is. It's a coffee maker. Um, we're going to go to mono because it is a mono sound. The sample rate is the same as the project. So 48, 24, and we do not want the fast bounce. And then just hit export. Yes, I already called it that before. So we're going to overwrite that. Okay, so now we made our sample. So what we're going to do is come up here to our drum machine. We're going to find an open channel. As you can see, we have drum sounds here. So this doesn't have drum sounds. We're going to right click on it, load instrument, find our folder that we exported that file to. Click on that, and then here we go. Uh, yep, four will be good. And that is our sound. So obviously we'll have to route this to a separate channel so you can boost it loud enough. But now essentially you can just use this like you program the rest of your drums and you can program in this new percussion sound. All right, guys, so I hope you found this video interesting and I hope you guys can make your own percussion samples to put them in your own tracks. So if you guys like this video, consider subscribing and hit that like button. Follow us on Instagram for daily posts. You can find the beats that I make right here at the studio on our SoundCloud page. True Sound Studios also mixes and masters your tracks. So once again, guys, thanks for watching this video. I'm Wiesna, we're at True Sound Studios and True Sound Studios is in your ears.